Hello friends. I'm so glad you joined me today. We are continuing on our discussion about what a game changer is. In last episode, I talked about at length the, the fact that we have got to speak up. We've got to say something. And I tell you what, I want to be known as a woman who spoke, a woman who said the truth, spoke the truth, spoke as an oracle of God. We're living in diverse times. We're living in times when chaos is rising. You know, darkness is filling the earth. Deep darkness is covering the people. There's so much deception and so much. If you don't hear the voice of God, number one, if you don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, you're in a time and a season when you could easily be deceived. And so you have to decide that you're going to endure to the end. Jesus said those who endure to the end will be saved. You have to decide that you're going to endure to the end and be saved and then take the steps necessary to ensure that you hear the voice of God, you have wisdom and discernment so you can recognize the spirit that is about people. Because let me tell you something, the devil comes as an angel of light. He comes twisting the word of God. And when people twist the word of God, others who don't have a strong relationship with the Lord and an ability to hear the Holy Spirit or discern the spirit, they end up getting deceived. And friend, there's nothing to fear about that. Just make the decision that you want to build a strong foundation and understanding of how the Holy Spirit moves, an ability to hear the voice of your father and recognize the voice of a stranger. Because there are a lot of voices right now. There is a lot of noise right now. And you need to be able to discern the difference between that which is right, that which is wrong, that which is truth, that which is a lie. Remember, the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. And the word of God itself discerns. It's a discerner for you. If you will read the word of God and take it to heart and put it to practice, then you're going to recognize when something is said that is off and twisted. And I would just recommend that you read a book out of the Proverbs every single day because of the wisdom in and of itself that's found in the book of Proverbs is significant. And so I want to recommend that for you today. Take that to heart, put it to practice and allow and ask the Holy Spirit to help you to learn and grow and discern. There's a scripture in 1 John, it's 2.20. It says, you have a anointing from the Holy One and you know all things, but you can have something, friend, and not operate in it. You can have something, friend, and not really even know that you have it. So you have to you have to recognize that you have it, receive and believe that you have it, but you've got to go to the next level. You've got to start practicing. Put it to practice every day. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Speak to me this day. My heart is open to you. You know, teach me, train me, lead me, guide me. Show me exactly what it is that God desires of me. Remember, God's on the throne, not getting up. Jesus is seated right beside him. He's not getting up until the Father says so. And, the, and only the Father knows when that's going to be. He's there. He's advocating, uh, interceding for you and I to overcome. Praise God. If Jesus is praying for you, how could you not overcome? The only way you could not overcome with the prayers of Jesus behind you is if you are totally off in your focus and you don't know who you are, what you possess, and what you're supposed to be doing. And so these these programs that I'm doing right now in this series about game changers, these really are the sons of God. They know who they are. They're led by the spirit of God and they go and they do, they do the word and the will of God. They understand how to pray and decree. They understand where truth and liberty really come from. They're not looking to someone else to give them what only God can. I have begun to understand over really many years ago that the only person I need to 
to have a real deep conversation with and take everything to is God, is Jesus working with the Holy Spirit. No one else can take care of anything for me. I have a husband who's a sounding board and gives me wisdom, but, but I don't even take everything to him. There are thoughts and concerns and things that I have every single day that I just lift up to my daddy God, because he is the only one who can take care of it. And so I go to him in faith, in prayer, and devotion every day and I am believing to hear from him throughout my day. Today I want I want to read something out of the book of Acts about it's a prayer for courage and strength and I think that today with everything that's going on around the world Christians need courage and they need strength. We need to rise up, we need to begin to speak and we need to know what and how we are doing what we're supposed to be doing. Jesus gave us a commission. He sent us out on a mission and we're, we've partnered with him in his power to go and do it. And, and so we should be doing it every single day and we should be doing it with the power of the Holy Spirit at work in our life. And so I want to read this. It comes out of Acts 4. And literally, it's a prayer for boldness. Acts 4, I'm going to start reading in 23, and I'm going to go through 31. Reading out of the New King James, it says, And being let go, they went to their own companies. Well, let me back up and put this uh, in context. That Peter and John have been had been taken into, they'd been arrested, basically. And, and they were threatened. And they were told that they could not use the name of Jesus. And so what it, when it says here, and being let go, they went to their own companions. That just is talking about John and Peter. Okay. And reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. So when they heard that, they raised their voice to God with one accord with one accord and said, now listen, this is unity. When you hear or see this phrase, one accord, it means they had a singleness of mind, a singleness of purpose, a singleness of, of focus, a singleness of request, a singleness of belief, right? And they were all in unity concerning this matter. And so it says that they raised their voice to God in one accord and said, Lord, you are God who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, who by the mouth of your servant, David, have said, why did the nations rage? The nations are raging today from a, from a, from a spiritual perspective and why the people plot vain things. The kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. And basically that had been what had just happened to Peter and John. And, and so they're bringing this matter before God for truly, this is verse 27, for truly against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed, right? Whom you anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles, the people of Israel were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. Now, Lord, look on their threats. So they're calling on God. They're using his word. They're upholding his word before him, right? They said, you said, your servant David said this. And, and so we're holding the word up towards God. And saying, now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness, they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal. I want you to get that. We don't stretch out our hand to heal. When we stretch out our hand to heal, we're stretching out his hand, God's hand to heal. And that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together 
was shaken. The power of God shook that place and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Amen. So today I want to pray that you are going to be bold. That is Acts 4, 23 through 31. And, and that's what I'm encouraging you to do today. You need to be bold. Hallelujah. And you need to stand up and speak the word of God with great courage and boldness. And, and all you have to do is say, God, fill me, right? Lord, grant to your servants that with all boldness, they may speak your word. That's verse 29. By stretching out your hand, God, to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And so that's what we're to do. And when you pray the prayer, you will be filled. You will receive immediately. God doesn't withhold anything from those who ask. He does. He's not a withholder at all. He will give you what you desire. Now today I want to talk about Joseph a little bit as a game changer. And you know, a game changer is someone who's going to pray with boldness and speak the word of God with boldness. And they're going to be able to stretch out their hand in the name of Jesus and bring healing to the sick. And so God is going to flow through you in power to bring to pass miracle signs and wonders in the lives of others. And as you speak as an oracle of God, you're going to shift atmospheres. You're going to change the very presence and power around you. And it's going to affect people that are in your vicinity. We're going to look at that in detail in a few weeks, but it's right there in the word. We're going to talk about it. And that's who you are. Say, I am a soul reaper, a soil shaker for God. The soil under my feet shakes when I walk. God has given me every place I tread my foot for the kingdom of God. And so you are a reaper of souls. Amen. You, that's you, a bold, courageous disciple of Christ who is able to reap souls and, and bring in a harvest that is unlike any other that has ever been seen in all of humanity. I pray bold prayers. I've asked God for millions of souls, millions upon millions. Why not? There are almost 8 billion people on the face of the earth. Could it be that God would use you or use me in a way that he could take this one program and, and 8 billion people see this program and hear about Jesus and give their life to the Lord? That can happen in a split second. God can do that. So why not ask and pray big, bold prayers so that God can do it? He said in Psalm 2, I have given you the nations as your inheritance. I have given you the nations as your inheritance. Ask of me, it says, ask of me and I will give you the nations as your inheritance. And so I'm asking God, give me the nations. You ask the same, give me the nations and it will be done. We don't know what it's going to look like as the nations are given to us, but every single day we're going to be faithful with whatever's in our hand and whoever crosses our path to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're determined to be game changers. We're determined to turn things around. We're determined to advance the kingdom of God. We're determined to see all people come to the knowledge of truth. Amen. And so Joseph as a game changer, you know, he had a rough, kind of a rough road, right? God gave him an amazing dream that his, his brothers would serve him, that they would come and bow down before him. He wore a coat of many colors in this dream. And, and Joseph was a little bit of a rabble rouser. He went and he told his brothers, you're going to serve me. You're going to bow down before me. And they didn't like it. They didn't take too kindly to it. And so they plotted against him to kill him, but they had to be super sneaky about it because, you know, J uh, Joseph was Jacob's favorite. And so they couldn't just kill their brother because their father would not have taken kindly to that. And who knows what have, would have been the outcome. 
And so they dug a pit and they took, they thought, you know, maybe a wild animal would come along and get in the pit and kill Joseph and, and, or, you know, that somebody would find him and kill him. They were hoping that he would be killed, but not at their hands. And so they did that. They dug a pit, they threw him in and a troop of men come along and they take him captive and take him back to Egypt. And so the thing about Joseph that is so worthy of a mention, Joseph and Mordecai were very similar in that Mordecai was raised up to be the second in command to the king of Persia. Joseph had great favor upon his life. The favor of God and the favor of men were upon Joseph. And not only did he rise to the top wherever he was, including in prison, he, he rose to be the number two, the prime minister actually to Pharaoh. And, and so we see the same thing in a different way with Daniel. Daniel rose to the position of Magi and he was highly respected and was serving in the courts of many unregenerated Kings. He didn't just serve Nebuchadnezzar, he served Darius, he served in Cyrus, and, and so he was given a place of great honor. And so people who are able to, to give an answer, to discern a, the meaning of a dream, or to have the wisdom of God to bring into a situation that changes the outcome of it, those are the people who, who typically rise to the top, who gain favor with God and men, and God uses them in mighty ways and nation changing ways to fulfill his purpose and his plan for his people. Remember Esther was chosen to bring deliverance to God's people in a time when it was said that they would be destroyed, utterly destroyed by the decree that Haman wrote. And so we see the same thing, you know, Joseph had the foresight and the discernment to create all these storehouses of grain because he foresaw that a famine was coming. And actually the fulfillment of Joseph's dream was that his brothers came to him, not knowing it was Joseph, came there to Egypt to ask for food and, and for shelter in that time of great devastation. And when Joseph saw that it was his brothers, he became enraged and he was going to kill them immediately. And he had to take a little time out. You see a game changer understands they need a little time out to discern the plan of God. But it was in that moment with Joseph that his brothers bowed down before him and served him. And then he was reunited with his father and his father was able to speak a blessing over Joseph at the end of his life. And then also bless his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim with a blessing that is still utilized to this day among the Jews. It, it goes like this. May the Lord bless you as Manasseh and Ephraim right? May you be like, it goes like this. May you be like Manasseh and Ephraim. May you forget the pain of your past and may every day of your life be fruitful. And so we see the restoration of God there. We see that as it should have been, his father was able to bless him and his sons before he passed away. And, and there was there was this fulfillment of the dream, but Joseph had to go through a lot to get to the fulfillment of that dream. And so today I just want to encourage you that no matter what you have been told the, by the Lord directly, or perhaps someone else has confirmed a word of the Lord for you, but no matter what it is, if it has not come to pass yet, do not discard it. Just leave it there on the shelf because the word of God says the prophet Habakkuk said that though the vision tarry, wait for it because it will surely speak. It will not lie. It will come to pass. He also said in those writings in chapter two, he said, write the vision, make it plain. So he who reads it can run with it. And then it goes in because the, though it tarries, you know, wait for it. It will surely come to pass, but you know, write it on your heart, write it in your journal, keep it before you because it will come to pass. What's happening in the meantime 
from the moment that we have the dream or the vision or, or the prophetic word is that your character is being developed along the way. And that's really what happened to Joseph. You know, he was seduced or tried to, uh, Potiphar's wife tried to seduce him and he resisted that, ran out the back door. He was a man of honor. He was a man of character. He was a man of great self-control. He ran out the back of the house and then she accused him of raping her. He ends up in prison. Then he rises up to the top in the prison and is given a, a great place of honor and stature within the prison. And, and then the king or the Pharaoh has a dream and, and they call for Joseph, Joseph to come and interpret the dream. He goes to interpret the dream and, and it, it's accurate. And then he rises to the top there again until he becomes the second man in Egypt. Then he has the foresight to, to do the storehouses of grain so that when famine comes, the people can, can still survive and thrive and, and, and continue in, in the work of what they are doing. And so, so we see with a game changer that oftentimes we ha are in positions where a character is being developed for the moment that we're going to step in and speak. You know, Jesus only lived on the earth for 33 and a half years. And he didn't even step into his ministry until the end, the last three and a half years. What happened with him all the way up to that point was that he was growing in grace, as Luke said, but he was being prepared, right? We cannot, as game changers and people who can step in and shift things and change outcomes, we cannot just rush in to do those things. Things. We will destroy things if we're not ready. I've heard it said, and I do believe that your, your gift or your anointing, the gift that God has given you can take you further than where your character can sustain you. And we see that all the time in people's lives, whether they're serving in the church or out of the church, we see them rise to a certain level of notoriety, and then they end up in drugs and alcohol and completely destroyed. And, and so that's because the gift took them further than the place their character could sustain them. And so that's why, you know, you may have a vision and you may know exactly what God has said to you, but it's not coming to pass and you're frustrated about that. Don't be frustrated. Ask God, what do I need to learn? How do I need to grow in this season that will prepare me for the time to come? Because as a game changer, it may be one moment that you step into to speak and to change the outcome and it, and it sweeps in a big way across who knows how much, uh, you know, territory that it will affect. It could affect even the entire nation, but you've got to be prepared and you get prepared by staying in the word and staying in prayer and devotion and, and learning and growing every day. Just being faithful every day with what is in your hand is the easiest, most peaceful and effective way to grow in God. What can I do today for you, God, that will advance the kingdom of God? When you're faithful in least, God will make you ruler over much. That comes out of the parable of the talents. And remember, there was one who had one, one who had two, one who had five. The one who had one was afraid, doubt and worry overtook him and he hid his talent. He buried it. Two doubled. He invested his and doubled two to four. Five invested his and doubled five to ten. And when, when the master came back, he took the talent of the wicked servant. He didn't just, just give it to the guy with two who doubled to four, even though he told him, you're, you, you, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter into to your reward. He took that, that one and gave it to the one who now has ten. Why? Because he'd proven, proven himself most faithful. I think it has to do with the quickness of obedience 
And, and so the one with five was immediately obedient to what the master said. The one who had two was still in that place of, well, is this God? Is it in God? Am I hearing right? Is this me? They're questioning everything. The one who had five just knew it was God and went and did it. And the one who had two had a little bit of time in there. That's what I believe. That's why the one went to the 10. And so this one who's got two, who was given two and now has four, he's got a little growing yet to do before he rises to the stature of the one who who had 10 that turned into 11. So listen, we just need to be faithful every single day, but we need to make the choice to be bold in this hour, to speak the word and to lay hands on the sick and to do the great commission. You can start doing that right where you are today. You hear somebody, they need prayer, go pray with them right now. You need, you see somebody who's sick, can I pray for you to be healed right now and be bold and courageous to do it. Be bold to preach the word, be bold to share the word and do it in love, not as a hammer to bring about a change that you think you have to make happen, but in love and tenderness and mercy. Remember God, that's how God did it. It's the goodness of God that draws men to repentance. It's the goodness of God that opens a door to people. And so ask a question, have they considered this or considered that or done this or done that? Just stay with them and, and be faithful there until you bring them to healing or to salvation, whatever it is that you desire to do. Listen, friends, I'm so glad that you tuned in today here with me. And I pray that the words that I have spoken have encouraged your heart and strengthened you, but also have lit a fire in your belly to go and do. And I, I just want you to, to take these things seriously and know that we're living in an hour, whether this is what's going to happen. People are going to shrink back and they're, they're going to be silent and they're going to lose everything or they're going to be bold and fiery and ready to speak and obey God. And they're just going to continue to rise. They're just going to continue to move forward and, and grow stronger and stronger and more, more uh, faithful, more faithful. They're going to fulfill everything God has created them to do. I want that to be you. Let that be you today in Jesus name. Listen, I'd love to hear from you. Go to my website, charlannakelly.org. And in the upper right, right hand corner, click on the link. It says, ask Charlana, send me a little note. Let me know you're watching how the programs are affecting you. And if you have a prayer request, drop it down there and let me know. I'll love and be honored to pray for you. Listen, don't miss next week. We're going to be talking about Abigail and I don't want you to miss that. Okay. Because there's something very important there about about saving our household and our first call is to our family. Don't miss it. Mark this day, this channel, this time, and meet me back here again next week. Until we meet again, Godspeed and God bless.